Hey MVPs, Rico Nose here. Going to talk to you guys about the results from this weekend. It is week seven of the college football season and we just completed a UFC fight night. And I want to bring up both of them for really good reason, okay? Uh, if you're an MVP out there, you're paying for a service. You're paying for my analysis on, I guess, sports matchups, if you will. I don't typically ever analyze sports books. I don't really care about the odds you're offered in different avenues or what state you live in or what prop you should do and all this. I, I, I analyze people, individuals, teams, matchups, and that's what makes me different from everybody else is I'm just analyzing talent, if you will, and whether that be on the UFC side of the house or football side of the house. Now, you pay your $25 a month or your $255 a year. Thank you for being an annual member. Thank you for being a monthly member. Just remember that I am not... Uh, I'm not your employee. Like, that's not how I get down. No, I provide a service, and if you want it, you pay for it and you get it. And I, I want to make that point clear because yesterday on the Discord server, we had to ban at least, I, I would say I banned six people. Six individuals who lost their shit. You know, um, and one guy wrote something very telling. He wrote and he said, if I F up at my job, if I F up at my job, I have to hear about it. So Rico's no different. If he Fs up at his job, he has to hear about it. Well, that's, you're gravely wrong. You're gravely wrong. You F up at your job, you have to hear about it because you are not your own employer. Because you answer to someone. Because someone else determines your livelihood, if you will. Okay. If you don't like my service, then don't pay for it anymore. You don't need to come to my server that I provide and start mouthing off and wishing death upon other MVPs or death upon college-aged athletes. You're gambling on the most unreliable demographic in the world. You don't believe me? Ask any girl who's dating a teenage male. How reliable is that guy to not cheat on you, to not lie? You know, like a number of things. So when you're gambling on these young men to go out and perform every Saturday and somebody doesn't perform to the level of expectation or analysis, there's no need to go and wish death upon anyone, start yelling and screaming on a Discord. It's just ridiculous, man. It gives off, you're a very emotional gambler. You know, one of the most often questions I get is, hey, Rico, uh, why don't you bet? Why don't you bet on your picks? This guy gives out picks and he don't even bet on them. No, 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 no. I give out analysis. My chart is my chart. Your chart is your chart. Like, you should have your own chart. You should have your own notes. You should have your own methodology, your own approach to gambling. Whatever it is, you should have that yourself. We have a guy named Darth. He just live bets all the whole game. He just live bets the whole game. Just keeps spamming the button the whole time. I'll never understand that, that impulse, but that's his business. We have other people who put one unit on every lock, half a unit on every lean, and all these other methods they have. Everybody's got a different approach to how they do it. I don't sit here and dictate that type of stuff. I'll highlight something green. I'll underline something. People always ask me, what does that mean? Well, it means uh, that's a bet I would make. Or I just want to draw your attention to it because I think it's better than the other stuff on the chart. But I'm never dictating unit size. I'm never dictating what you do. I read on the Discord server this morning. I, I laid down in bed uh, for about an hour just reading the messages from the MVPs. And I got one, and it said, we had a really rough morning yesterday, but the night finished strong. That's what he said. And he doesn't understand that that comment is very individualized to him. When I tell you guys we are hitting at 61%, 60%, lifetime, 60%, I need you guys to understand what that means. That means if we're green all week long and we get the first four games right of the day, the strategy should probably be go very light over here. Slow down a little bit. The law of averages is going to come back. I don't even want to talk about Murphy's Law or anything. The law of averages are going to come back. There has not been a single week where I have absolutely gotten everything right. And when you pay for analysis, capping, whatever you want to call your, what you're paying for, uh, if you're paying for 100% accuracy, 
you live in in the most ridiculous world I've ever seen any premise I could ever think of I, I just don't even understand you and I don't need to I don't care to when you lose a bet I don't go on the server and start ripping you and start calling you names and start telling you how terrible of a person you are no I just shake my head and say hey man probably shouldn't have parlayed hey guys I hope you don't parlay hope you bet it right and I just keep it moving you guys pay for a service. Let me explain some to you. You pay for a service, and in this service, I provide a UFC analysis. The same time, you guys are all betting these college football games. At the same time, you guys are betting these college football games. We are winning at UFC. The whole thing is green. We lost one value bet. No, a lot of people didn't even make that bet. We went undefeated last night, essentially. There was 38 different, or I'm sorry, 30 different bets on this chart that you could make individually, however you wanted to do it. Get creative, do whatever you want. 30. And you could have, you could have won an immense amount of money. That's why there's certain MVPs that are so ecstatic about yesterday. And there are some others that are going, oh man, I don't know what I'm going to do. I had a gentleman write me directly, and he said, Rico, I lost $3,000 on your Ole Miss pick. That's what he said, on your Ole Miss pick. First and foremost, if you lost $3,000 on Ole Miss, I hope you have a $300,000 bankroll because that is not more than a one-unit bet. There's this urge among MVPs, among gamblers, to put the most amount of money on the biggest game. I talked about this before the game starts. Saturday morning, I was talking about these matchups, and I said, why do you guys have this urge to put so much money on a marquee matchup? You got one brand versus another brand. What don't you see on this chart every week? You don't see Ohio State. You don't see Texas. You don't see Col Colorado. You don't see Ole Miss and LSU. Every week, you don't see those teams. We're trying to find the advantage. $3,000 should have been put on UAB at Army. Did you not see how terrible that was? Or Missouri at UMass. When you look at the entries, multiple entries for Missouri at UMass. I believe in this game, multiple entries for UAB and Army. Just because the sports book offers you props on individual players in a major marquee game, they only give you individual props on the group of five during the week. That's why we dominate. But on Saturdays, you don't get those props. On Saturday, you only get props on the Alabamas of the world, the Georgias. You bet $3,000 on a spread or a money line of Ole Miss LSU. Do you realize that you could have bet at the very same time $3,000 on a plus 215 that I really believed in? That I made a two-hour video. I made a, a, an hour-long video, over an hour-long video on this entire fight card. And you MVPs just didn't watch it. You guys just don't care about winning money. You want to talk about how much money you lose. You want to talk about it on the server. And you don't watch the videos that could win you thousands upon thousands of dollars. And shout out to the MVPs who actually, if you go to the Discord server and you go to the wins, shout out to these guys. Now, we somebody bet Boise State minus 20 and a half. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit here. But do you see this right here? This is a responsible person. $1,000 on Royval. When else are you going to hit? And he got it at plus 100. Maybe that's his unit size. I look down here, that's his unit size. But when you see people betting on the fights, do you guys understand that this is what we do year round? Oh, I just want to keep scrolling because I see all these parlays. They make they, they get me nervous. 
They get me nerves. The, the parlays get me nerves. More power to you. Congratulations. I know you guys, it feels good. The dopamine's real. Shout out to Salt and the Swat. Those are all the fights he parlayed together. It's a plus 1,600. One guy sent me a message on Twitter. He said, I bet a dollar made $238. I don't know what he did. But there you go. 10 to make 32. Great fights. 10 to make 160. There's a man taking Vanderbilt money line and Brandon Royval. You could take this and make it. I don't, I don't know what to tell you guys. When else are you going to predict a a plus 235 money line winner in football? It's not going to happen. But that man just made $100 into 3800 while you guys are throwing $3,000 or hundreds of dollars at LSU versus Ole Miss. I'm just saying, it's hard for me to be to feel a certain way when I look and I see these guys hitting plus 776s in UFC, and you guys only watch the videos. If I go check to see how many views the UFC video had versus the college football video, I guarantee you it's an insane amount. I guarantee you, but there's guys right here just flipping their money left and right. So it's hard for us to really, it's hard for me to get emotional about you guys who miss. Like, I just don't care. Because the service is there. The videos are made. The charts are made. And there's just no way. Like, you got to watch the videos. I t- we tell you that. But the charts are posted on Discord. They're on Patreon. Let's go talk about those results, man. So we'll, we'll give you results on the chart. And then I'm going to talk about all the games. Actually, let me talk about the games first. Akron, West, Western Michigan. It was actually a really late game. Finished late because of a weather delay. I told you guys I thought Western Michigan was better than Akron, and it was a a nine-and-a-half point spread. I didn't trust Western Michigan to cover that spread. They ended up doing it, and a lot of it had to do because two guys really showed out in this game. Womack came back from injury. That's their star wide receiver, this little guy down here on the the screen. And then Jalen Buckley, the most fragile running back in the world, who's so good if he could just stay healthy, came back, and he rushed for 103 yards on seven carries. They they obviously have Jaden Nixon in the running back room. And they've been trying to get Jaden Nixon to do great things, and he hasn't. And, and he had 14 carries in this game, and he just struggled to really get it going. So you go out there and you go back to old faithful Buckley from last year. They got a one-two punch that's real, though. So Western Michigan can actually do this thing. They were terrible in the first quarter. Second quarter, they woke up, and then Akron did what Akron does, which just falls apart down the stretch, you know, down, down the line. And that's unfortunate for Akron. I think Akron needs a new head coach. Ohio State, Oregon. I told you not to bet on this game. They're equivalent teams. They're elite teams. They're great. Good game. Watch it. Cheer it. If you're betting on that game, you're a fan, and fandom is the number one way to lose money. Don't be a fan. I'm not emotional. I'm not a fan. It is what it is. Ole Miss LSU. Ole Miss sells, uh, sold. L- Ole Miss sells in this game like you wouldn't believe. It's unfortunate. Shout out to LSU. Their defense didn't look terrible. It really didn't. Jackson Dart not throwing two touchdowns hurt me on the prop side, but Nussmeyer came through three touchdowns. We also had a combined bet here. We hit a really big one, and I don't know how many of you guys bet on it. Uh, we actually hit a couple of them. I'm going to go over here and show you a prop if you can do it. This one, though, we hit this plus, where is that? Plus 145 for Kyron Lacey and Trey Harris to combine for 200 yards. Thank God we hit it because Trey Harris gets injured. And anytime you lose two of your star players, two of your star offensive players at one point during the game, it's going to be difficult to continue to score. Ole Miss struggled. Jackson Dart did not get it done. And congratulations to LSU. And really, I actually think both these teams are better than Tennessee. I do. I think they're both better than Tennessee. Vanderbilt, I told you guys, we're taking Diego Pavia no matter what. I'm the only guy in the world that's been talking about Diego Pavia for two or two to three years now, uh, at least two years. And I've been telling you Diego Pavia is him. Every time I watch him play, he just converts on third down. He just moves the chains. He's efficient. And the defense of Vanderbilt's athletic enough to be to be in it. And Kentucky's offense was gross. Brock Vandergriff played terrible. I don't know what he's doing. I don't think he trusts his eyes. So when he throws the ball, he's like, holding on to you guys ever try to throw a pass to somebody and then you change your mind at the last second because you see the db coming so it just like eats the ground you hold it too long whatever that's what's happening to this guy and that should happen at the park not in division one football on the other side vanderbilt diego's making every play that matters i told you guys take his 40 yards rushing 50 yards rushing all that shit hit by halftime that's another thing our props were hitting by halftime that's amazing so i'm really impressed with vanderbilt expected them to do this type of thing uh shout out to them Iowa State, West Virginia. 
Hate to break it to all the West Virginia fans. Your defensive secondary is terrible. And it's just going to happen over and over and over. And Iowa State's defense is mean. Mean. People need to respect Iowa State. I think they're a top 10 team, the best team in the Big 12. I've talked about this all offseason. I've talked about this all season. We had them on the chart. I'm not fading them. I'm riding them. I believe in Iowa State wholeheartedly. They are great. Their secondary has three NFL guys in it. Their receivers are great. Everything about them is awesome. And then they go and find a white running back named Hanson. Yep, the sports books know about it. I wasn't believing in Hanson because he looks a little slow on tape, but he was a battering ram, got it done. Really impressive. Iowa State beating North West Virginia. It's just the reality of the situation. One team's better than the other. Syracuse, I told you, I've never seen an NC State team. This is two weeks in a row now. NC State was favored by eight and a half the week before. I was like, I've never seen that. Why the hell are they favored by eight and a half? They, they've never shown me that. I don't believe in NC State like that. Then this week, Syracuse is only favored by two and a half points. Vegas, for whatever reason, really, really values NC State. And I have yet to see them perform to that standard. And that's why I knew Syracuse was going to cover this spread. Now, unfortunately for me, I got a little crazy and I added it to the locked column in regards to the over. That missed. But the spread hit easily. It was not even an issue. No sweat. None whatsoever. Syracuse going on. And Syracuse doesn't have the greatest offensive line. But NC State got nothing, man nothing v Vegas keeps value in NC State keep looking for value in the spread when you see an NC State matchup because it's there oh Georgia Southern Marshall so Marshall starting quarterback is a guy that I really believe in in Braylon Braxton he actually goes down with an injury in this game they were up you see that you see the score there it's 23 24 I'd be sick to my stomach if I put Marshall on the chart I'd be sick for MVPs if I put Marshall on, and I didn't I said Marshall should win this game. Braylon Braxton's going to be a B. Braylon Braxton gets hurt. They bring in Stone Earl. Trash. Interception falls apart, and Georgia Southern starts catching up. Now Georgia Southern, J.C. French, gets injured as well. So J.C. French starting quarterback, he gets injured, and Dexter Williams comes in. He's a transfer from Indiana, and he actually lost the quarterback battle in the spring. Dude, he played so good. Came out and played lights out. He's athletic. He's a beast. So... Two backup quarterbacks had to duel, duel it out in the fourth quarter, and Georgia Southern comes back to win that game in dramatic fashion. That's just crazy. Dramatic fashion. Minnesota wins the game with about 16 seconds left. They covered the spread if you're that MVP who bet the four or the three and a half. I want to explain something to you guys. On the chart, it's a miss for me because it was minus four and a half. But if you're a responsible MVP, you know – you should tease this down. Three and a half is infinitely better than four and a half, and two and a half is even better than that. So there's a difference here. And one MVP was smart enough to tease it down to three and a half. And the reason you do that, I mean, it's because touchdown versus field goal, right? If you're doing the math. And, it can, and it'll come back to bite you when you're looking at 21 to 17, something like that. So some people are smart. And when I say touchdown versus field goal, touchdown, field goal, there's a four-point spread there. Four-point spread whenever somebody scores a touchdown and a field goal. So four-and-a-half is deadly. Four-and-a-half is terrible. That's touchdown safety. Nobody's doing that. So three-and-a-half is infinitely better than four-and-a-half. And then two-and-a-half, well, at that point, it's, it's you're good, like really good. And that's because you can cover it with a field goal. Whole another story. But anyways, you can cover it by winning by a field goal instead of a touchdown. Minnesota wins the game. UCLA, we did hit on the team total under. It was scary at halftime. They had 10 points, and I had them on a team total under 17 and a half. I know UCLA can't score, and then they proved me right. They stopped scoring. So it's unfortunate for Minnesota. Struggling. Running game was not there, but Max Brosman showed up to pass a little bit, and he got it done. Next game, K-State, Colorado. A lot of you guys stayed up and watched it late. I was watching it while I was laying in bed. I just had to get off the server and relax. I'll say that um, – Shador Sanders played well. It's tough when you start losing guys like Travis and, and uh, Hunter. I'm not Hunter. Um, Jimmy Horn. But when you can't stop DJ Giddens from running, and then there's just a I, – I still don't believe in Avery Johnson. Let me just be clear. I've never believed in Avery Johnson. Yes, he threw the touchdown in this thing, but I thought it was just a bad play by Hodge as a corner. Just getting beat. Hodge shouldn't be out there in, in single coverage by himself. I don't think very highly of Hodge. Transfer from Liberty. I've watched the tape. I don't believe in any grades. I don't believe in any of that stuff. He's just not very good. 
Um, I like the way Augusta was ran. I like the way Colorado hung in there and was competitive. And I'll say that being competitive in Big 12 losses is, is valuable. No one really wants to hear about moral victories, but not getting blown out at home against one of the better teams in the Big 12 is, I think, is very impressive. So I thought Colorado played well. They played good enough to win. They just didn't win. And that's a winning culture at K-State. That's Chris Kleiman. I give coaches a lot of credit for that regard. But it's a damn shame, man. And you had your, for me, Shador Sanders winning that game, that would have been one of those Heisman moment type things. And it would have been like his second one this season. Could have gone on a path if Colorado were to win more games so of being the guy. Because I, I fully believe the Heisman Trophy winner is going to be a quarterback. I don't, I don't believe all this drama about Genty or Travis Hunter. Like, I, 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 it's going to be a quarterback. And right now, it's Dylan Gabriel, right? That's where I think he's on path at the way they're playing. So, either way, never on the chart. Shouldn't have been betting it. And I saw a lot of guys on the server betting it. That's all your business. Boise State, Hawaii. Like I said, some people teased it down to 20 and a half because they're smart. Get it underneath three touchdowns instead of the, the 21 and a half that was on the board which is what I had it at, but I don't change. When I put it on the, the board, I don't change it. I should probably advise you to do it, but I didn't think they were going to need it. They did need it. Two fourth-quarter touchdowns to get back in this thing. It was gross. Uh, Hawaii stops the run a little bit, and then they broke down, and they couldn't stop it anymore. So Genty still got 217 yards, which is insane. He's still dominating. He looks like a one-man wrecking crew. Hawaii had no semblance of a run game in this. It's crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know what Timmy Chang's going to do, man. Boise State did not look as dominant as the score indicates, just to be clear. Texas, Oklahoma, exactly what I thought. Oklahoma wouldn't be able to score against one of the best defenses in the country. And it's just Oklahoma has no receivers. They can't move the ball. Texas and everybody else, right? Texas is the number one team in the country. I've, I've been saying it over and over and over. They're just deep. They got talent everywhere. Really believe in them. Penn State finding a way to win. Congratulations. I really wish they would have went for the touchdown. But after USC misses a field goal, there's no incentive to score a touchdown. They just want a field goal and get out of there. We would have covered the spread if they scored a touchdown. It doesn't happen. Do I consider that a bad beat? Not necessarily. Uh, shout out to Penn State for finding a way to win. But they are not a top five team. Not if you're going to overtime with USC. Having to come from behind. Yeah, they're not it. They're up here, but they're not it for me. Georgia played terrible against Mississippi State. I didn't think they would cover the spread to begin with. I didn't put it on the chart. It was 33 points. That's a little absurd. But Georgia gets it done, goes out there and scores a lot. I was impressed with Mississippi State. Showing up to play, trying your best. Yeah, I'm cool with it. They, that, that was a valid effort. Like any other season, Mississippi State loses to Georgia in a game like this, you'd be singing their praises. But it's only because you've seen how terrible they are against all the other teams they've been playing against that you're just like, oh, this is a fluke or something. Now, Georgia better wake up. They're not looking as dominant as they need to be. Speaking of not looking as dominant as they need to be, Alabama, my God. Alabama could have lost this game. I don't know if they should have lost the game, but they could have lost this game. This was a riveting game. And there was a lot of riveting games on, on Saturday if you were pulling for the underdogs, it was it was fucking intense. And even then, just even if you're not don't have a dog in the fight, you're just watching it. You're like, man, these are incredible games. They were really fun to watch. I mean, I'm serious right here. Look at this: Alabama, South Carolina, Florida, Tennessee. I mean, incredible. And shout out to South Carolina defensive front playing out of their mind, doing the best they can. They have a freshman quarterback who makes terrible decisions. Lenora Sellers misses a wide open receiver in the end zone for the the final play. Uh, he threw that shit 20 feet in the air. It's it's nuts. Was it a two-point conversion? Yeah, it's nuts. He's just screaming. Why did he throw it into the, the crowd? Florida, Tennessee. I was so dialed in on this game. It's crazy. I I have a really good read on Tennessee. I have a really good read on Florida, too. So I told the MVPs before this game, you cannot bet on Tennessee to cover this spread. Florida's going to cover the spread. Florida can stop anything Tennessee's going to do throwing the ball. Nico cannot throw on this defense. And I was 100% right. Nico cannot throw on this defense. This defense is real. The DBs are elite. Now, Florida has a tough time scoring. We get that. So, I was so dialed in, I made this crazy one. And I wish people would slow down and read the chart. Because I'm really proud of this one down here. It's a plus 224. And it's Florida going to stay within 24 and a half. That's pretty easy to do. I had an alt under a 59 and a half. I knew the defenses could stop each other and or could stop both offenses. And then this last part. 
Florida under 20 and a half. Understand that if I'm predicting Florida to be under 20 and a half and still cover the spread at 24 and a half, then I don't think Tennessee is going to score 30 points. That's, that's where I'm at. I don't think they're going to score 45. I don't think they're going to score whatever the hell Vegas thinks they're scoring. And that's why that bet was so precision and so dialed in. And I wish more people bet it. I really do. But I also had it right over here on the alternate spread. And we'll talk about that in a few when I go over the charts. Clemson over Wake Forest. It was a sweat-free thing for me. MVPs, let me tell you guys something. They, they, yeah, I never want to be in a foxhole with MVPs. My, my members are the most mentally fragile people alive. They are, no, don't get me wrong. Some of them are the smartest football fans I know, smartest gamblers I know. Some of them are great. I love what they do. I like some of these kids. They do some research. They start quoting different stats and different things. I love it. But the ones who sit there and go, Clemson sucks. I don't know why you put money on this team. Who's this team? Why do we put money on this? Whenever somebody writes that, I know they're just blind tailing the chart and they have no research. They're blind tailing the chart and they've done no research. Facts. Because why would you write that if you put your own hard money on it and then you don't know what you're putting your money on? Like you don't even know what you're betting on? I heard it all day long about North Texas. But we're watching the North Texas game. A dude crashes out in the third quarter. What? What the hell is wrong with you? Do you not know what you bet on? You bet on a team. And I told you before the game. We'll get into it. Oof, we'll get into it. Clemson here. Dominates. Ends up scoring 42 points over the second and third quarter. Very impressive. Shutting down Wake Forest. This is what I expected. I think Clemson's a top five team. I think Clemson is a top five team. I like I think they're better than Penn State. I think they're better than a lot of these teams that are ranked ahead of them. I really do. Oh yeah, they could beat the hell out of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. I think they beat Bama. I like Clemson a lot. Notre Dame. Very impressive the way they came out. Uh, they scored 49 unanswered points. <laughs> Stanford scored that first touchdown, and Notre Dame came out and said, enough's enough. Love the way Notre Dame's been playing lately. I probably should have had them on the chart. That's free money I missed out on. Let me tell you, there's two games I regret not putting on the chart. Texas, Oklahoma, and Notre Dame, Stanford. And I don't have a lot of regrets in life. BYU, they finished their drives. I told you there was going to be field goals. It didn't happen until the second half, which sucks. But they finished their drives. They're looking dominant. And Arizona... It's, it's to the point where I'm convinced it's coaching. Arizona's coaching. Their, their methodology and their scheme is just not right. It really isn't. You can't come out here against BYU and have 52 passing attempts. You can't, man. 52 passing attempts, you're not going to win that game. Nah. Not when they're all play action. No, nobody believes you in your play action. Missouri, no sweat. Not worried about it. I know they lost last week, but there's such a gap between Power 5 versus Group of 5 teams, and Matt, UMass is, is one of the worst Group of 5 teams, and then Missouri is one of the best Power 5 teams. So there's, there's 100 teams between these two if we're ranking teams. There's 100. I was never worried about Missouri covering the spread against Massachusetts, and it was on the chart, and we were right, and it felt good. Shout out to me. Let, let me explain to you why I know this is true. Look at Marcus Carroll. Do you guys understand that Marcus Carroll would rush for 200 yards against UMass if he was at Georgia State? Like if Georgia State played UMass, Marcus Carroll would go for 200 yards. So now you're on Missouri with all these teammates. They're going to spread the ball around differently. Of course you're going to crush him. That's how I look at it. It's stuff like that. Cal Pittsburgh. <laughs> uh, some things I didn't mention for this game. Number one, I missed on, on a couple things. I missed on two passing touchdowns for Mendoza. I wish he would have thrown two passing touchdowns. I I thought he would. Everybody has against Pitt, and he didn't do it. They ended up running him in, settling for some nonsense. And then I forgot to tell you guys. I tell you every week. I've told you two weeks in a row. Maybe you're a new MVP and you don't know. Um, I forgot to tell you guys. Cal's got the worst offensive line I've seen in the Power Five. I say it every week. Their offensive line is gross. They're getting, they're getting sacked. They're getting murdered out there. It's bad. And then the other thing they have is the worst kicker in America. And it both came to, to fruition. Both came to the forefront and 4K in this game. Worst kicker in America. Oh, my goodness. Worst kicker in America. 
and bad offensive line. Illinois, this wasn't on the chart. It, they really let me down, but they didn't let me down because I didn't put it on the chart. The, the spread was huge, huge. Purdue starting a backup quarterback. I try not to bet on games where we have a new quarterback that I've never really seen. I've seen highlights. I've seen huddle film. I've never seen him in a, on a Saturday, so I can't go there, right? Purdue starts off struggling and getting absolutely blown the hell out. 24-3 at halftime. We're laughing. We're joking. It's funny. It's not funny anymore. Purdue goes out there and goes for the win. They end up in overtime. Purdue goes for two for the win, and they don't get it. But losing 50-49, to 49, very, very good performance by Purdue in a loss. I guess a moral victory, if you will. And But Illinois, man, you got to buckle up. The Alt, I'm sorry, the Altmeyer props that I had, I think they hit at halftime. It feels really good when I put out player props and stuff and they hit it halftime. We did have a pretty big scare with Pat Bryant not getting his anytime touchdown in his yards until overtime. Oh, he got his yards in the fourth quarter on the last drive. And then he got in overtime, he got his touchdown. So, so clutch. And we'll talk about that on the chart when it comes up. Iowa dominated Washington. Very impressed with what Iowa did. Washington fatigued, worn out, and looked apart. They just got ran over and they fell apart in the fourth for real. Wisconsin Rutgers, I had to make a, a pick, and I told you guys Wisconsin looks like the better team. For me, Wisconsin looks like this this dude, Braden Locke, is playing lights out, man. He really is. He's playing good, completing passes. It looks like the injury was a blessing in disguise. And to Wee Walker, they thought he was going to be the third-string running back. He's not. He's a starter, and he's a beast. Starter and a beast. I hope all the other running backs take a leave of absence from the team and don't show up anymore. Wisconsin looks great. They look great. Shout-out to Rutgers as well. Rutgers, win two more games, please. Three more games. I'm on your over. I bet your over wins. Come on, go get them. Georgia Tech, North Carolina. I told you guys it would be a high-scoring game, a shootout. It obviously was. Unfortunately, Omari and Hampton never scored a touchdown. He had his opportunities. He didn't get it done. Jamal Haynes went ham. Jamal Haynes for 170 yards, two touchdowns. That's a little guy to be doing that to you. But, yeah, there's no defense in this game. K, uh, Haynes King. Haynes King needs to throw more touchdowns. He needs to utilize his wide receivers. He's not doing that. They had no passing attack in this game. And I've seen North Carolina's defense secondary get absolutely ate up. What's crazy is North Carolina, as good as they are, as talented as they are, as competitive as they are, they're 0-3 in the ACC. They have not won a single conference game. It's bad. Speaking of conference game, Ball State, Kent State. Hmm. When I talked about the chart before this game, I told you guys, I think Ball State's better than Kent State. I think Ball State is more than four points better than Kent State. Ball State is better than Kent State. I keep saying it over and over and over. And then I told you, but it's not a lock because I can't trust the brand of Ball State. So I'll move it to the leans column. Uh, but I don't trust the brand of Ball State. They're not a known commodity. I know the players. I don't trust them. And Ball State was covering the spread for most of this game. And if you didn't get to see the last two minutes of this game, I'm going to try to explain it to you, okay? Because we had a, a meltdown on the server. But in the fourth quarter... There was 31 points between these two teams. Ball State's covering the spread. About two minutes left in the game. Kent State backdoors and cover. And, and they're not going to win the game. They just backdoor cover. And when Kent State scores that touchdown, we're screwed. And we're like, they just backdoored us. So Ball State has the lead. And they're just going to run out the clock. And they're not going to cover the spread. And then they break free for like a 50-yard run. Homie Sloan breaks free, go get a touchdown, and now they're covering the spread, and we're screaming and yelling, oh, my God, we just got a backdoor cover with 49 seconds left or something like that. And we're winning by 10 points. I think it was 10, something crazy. We're covering. So Ball State backdoored. Or I'm sorry, Kent State backdoored. Ball State, not Ball State, just backdoored the backdoor. Enough backdoors. No more locked doors. No more locked doors. Where's my Aztec warrior? Um, if you don't get the reference, you're just a kid, bro. I can't help you. And then you got, you guessed it, with 40-something seconds left, K 
Kent State went out and backdoored it again. They went and scored another touchdown. McCray with a 56-yard touchdown. Uh, you see him, eight receptions, 213 yards, three touchdowns. He's not that good. I don't know what they're doing. But he went out and scored, and so it was an epic meltdown. I'm assuming some guy had all the parlays going and a bunch of money. Remember, this is at a time when this miss happens. We're 4-0 and on the other games. We're 3-0 and on the other games. So I'm only assuming that this guy parlayed Ball State, Missouri, Army, and Clemson. And he must have bet an absorbent amount of money on it. If you're parlaying my picks, you're just asking to fail. The picks are hitting at a 58, what is it, 50, 59%, 56, 57% against the spread. You can't parlay that. That's silly. Maybe you feel really good about some of these that you could parlay. You're going to lose. People were up huge because they parlayed the first three because it, it was the noon slate of games. They parlayed the first three. They were up huge. But why would you throw Ball State in there? We can't trust Ball State. That's why it's not over here. Oh, but Rico, you missed on all these. We can't trust none of these guys. No, sometimes you get it wrong. It happens. Sometimes you get it wrong and it happens. But that, that's just, that's silly, man. Buffalo Toledo. I was on Buffalo in this game. I talked to you guys about it. I thought they could cover the spread. I didn't put it on the chart, but I did specifically tell you Toledo's not that good. And Buffalo's been overachieving the whole year. I don't like Tucker Gleason at quarterback. He ends up getting injured in this game, by the way. And he didn't finish it. Some kid named Richter had to come in. And Buffalo has an NFL linebacker, NFL defensive back. Shout out to Marcus Fuqua. And um, just, they impressed me so much. They impressed me so much. Buffalo's got that that dog in them. They can scrap. Army UAB should have nuked it. Should have nuked it. Should have nuked it. The spread moved. Obviously, it was a lock. 23-point spread. And then it moved up to 28 and a half. It didn't matter, man. Army is elite. Army's offense can't be stopped. We had a rushing prop on this. If you can bet props, it hit by halftime. Should have made it even bigger, but it should have, could have, would not matter. What a great feeling. I told you Miami of Ohio sucks. I don't like them, but my talent chart tells me they're better than Eastern Michigan. My talent chart was right again. Talent chart's always right. Essentially, talent chart's always right. Louisville, Virginia. I added this to the chart late. Didn't get it done. I added this to the chart late. It's a misread on me. And I wish Louisville was better. Anthony Colandrea as a quarterback for Virginia is just scrappy. The defense is mean. Shout out to Sanker in the secondary for Virginia. They're always good. They have pros, bro. They have good players, senior, senior Latin players. Mount, uh, Fields is always open. Wide receiver for Virginia, always open. And it just sucks. So it hurts, man, but it is what it is. It's a, it's a miss. Cincinnati UCF. I did not care what the world was talking about in the early video last week. Early video. I told you Cincinnati's better than UCF. I have assessed these two teams. I've watched them. I know how bad UCF is. And I know how good Cincinnati is. And I got attacked for it on YouTube, by the way in a comment but MVPs I was on this money line from the jump I didn't say spread I'm taking an under underdog money line and I'm telling you we're getting it now listen when I tell you we're going to take an underdog money line there's different types of underdog money lines there are the purples which are value bets I'm taking them simply because the value they're offering us it's too much to ignore and then there's the black ones, which means I like them to cover the spread. Obviously, it's a lean, but I actually value that more. Black is better than purple. And if it was green, which I, have, I haven't, I've only done it twice, that means I really love it. But when I take a money line underdog, you guys are ignoring this bottom part of the chart. You could have bet one unit on each of these teams this week. Individually, you'd be ahead. You'd be ahead. By the way, on the season, I'm 24 out of 24. I'm 24 and 24 on money line underdogs. Do you understand how much, how crazy that is? Rico, that's 50%. Yes, every single one of those is plus value. You'd be so far. Right here, if you bet those two, you would be up. If you bet one unit on all these, you'd be up half a unit. 122 and 134. You bet $100 on each one of these, you would have gotten back 
more than four hundred dollars you got back four hundred and fifty dollars you'd be up 50 bucks half a unit just betting money line money line underdogs you'd be up way more than that on the whole season we can go back and do the math gotta trust me when i tell you about a money line underdog and i know it's scary sometimes you're looking at it like rico that doesn't make sense rico that doesn't make sense colorado state san jose state i missed i said take the over and we missed it by half a point the hook sucks good read bad execution i'm i'm disappointed hook sucks i missed both teams can score San Diego State, Wyoming, 100% right here. This was an underdog money line again, but I did not put it on the chart other than the talent chart. So if you ever were curious about a money line that you think you should be making, they're over here, and the money line talent chart is picking at a almost 70% clip. We're 40 and 18 this year. So if you ever want to bet a money line that you're thinking about betting, I put them over here, the coin flip games, and I tell you what my talent evaluation chart from the preseason, and you guys are always like, can we see the chart? Bro, I did a three-hour podcast on both charts, on the offense and the defensive chart ratings and the overall chart ratings. It's on YouTube. It's on the live tab on YouTube. Go there, watch them, take good notes. I also did not just a three-hour podcast on those. I also did them in week zero. I did a conference preview in week zero live cat live podcast it's live streams so go to youtube search rico knows go to the homepage, click on the live tab and then you'll see all these episodes scroll down to week zero you get all the charts scroll down before the week zero you'll see the offense and the defensive ratings i did all this in the preseason and i talked about these teams you would know all this information but just in case you don't have the charts at your disposal i put them up here every single week you should have been on San Diego State money line. It was a minus 105. You should have been on it. I can't bet for you. I can only put it on the chart and tell you it's hitting at 70%. That's better than the fucking spread. I, I don't know how else to tell you guys. It's in, it's in English. Numbers are universal. It's on the chart. I'm screaming it. Anything I put up there is going to be right. We missed on Old Dominion. It was on the chart as well. Or at least I told you these two were these two are on my chart, ranked 103 and 104. So very, very equivalent teams, and they showed out. They looked apart. The Northern Illinois Bowling Green. Another one on the chart. Another underdog that I told you. Here it is, Northern Illinois, plus 122. I said I love both teams, but I know what my chart tells me. Northern Illinois is a better team. So we're gonna go with Northern Illinois. That's how you make your money not lsu old miss not I did, nowhere in, in there did i say hey well my you know we're, we're gonna go do i don't even put it over here bro it's just it's just the way it goes memphis south florida they covered the spread but i didn't i didn't like the way they played south florida has a good defense but it's fine they covered the spread it was a lock congratulations ohio central michigan Ugh. i i had the right read here I had the right read. I told you Ohio's a better team than Central Michigan. I believe in the, the, the brand, the pedigree, the coaching. They're up 24-0 at the half. And that's the craziest backdoor cover you'll ever see. Backdoor cover, you'll ever see the craziest one. You're up 24-0 at the half, and you don't cover, and it's a miss. So when you start looking at, is that considered a bad beat? Hell yeah, it is. So when you look, this is a bad beat, bad beat, last fucking half, whatever. Another bad beat, terrible misread and i'll say it's a it's a misread so only for me only two misses over here that i feel bad about the rest should have been all hits this thing should have been five and two all right five and two everything else bad read bad read whatever it was on over here on the locks if we if i talk about it from that perspective bad beat bad read eh, you call it what you want north texas hurts my soul it's a bad read uh the lock of all locks, New Mexico. Arkansas State, bad read. Unfortunately, I got a little zealous. Bad, and then just a bad bet, if you will, at 21 and a half. About five bad plays. Don't know if I, I – the 10 and 10 is valid. 10 and 10 is valid. Yesterday was a bad day in that regard. But let's talk about it. ULM, Southern Miss. I told you I'm on their train. I'm on Southern – I'm on ULM. 
I'm on ULM. I believe in them. The coaching takes over. They get a little dominant. There was a point there where the score was 24, 21-14, I think. No, 21. No, 14. 14-17? What was it? 14-17. Yeah, 14-17 Southern Miss. I think they blocked a punt, returned it back for a touchdown. And then um, ULM put the put, put it on him. Hardy's out there playing great. Freshman running back playing great. Dude's not going to be at ULM long. He's going to transfer at some point. Somebody's going to sign him. He's too big and strong, doing too many great things. But ULM, that's, that's a damn wagon right there. Vegas disrespects them, doesn't believe in them. They're good. Speaking of good, New Mexico can score on anyone. I've already told you guys this over and over and over again. Devin Dampier gives New Mexico the most dynamic guy. You'll see, man, he's, he's just a bad little dude. Bad little dude. You never thought you'd see New Mexico blow out Air Force and put up 52 points. They covered the spread with ease. And don't believe this score. This score, it was, the game was not that close. Air Force put up 20 points in the fourth quarter. It was not that close. This game was over. And we were laughing all the way to the bank. It was a lock. And anytime I'm making New Mexico a lock, it's because I know how bad Air Force is. Shout out to New Mexico. Washington State, I told you I thought they were probably a better team than Fresno State, the way Fresno State's been playing, but I couldn't put it on the chart. I don't know what the spread was. I don't remember. It is what it is. Shout out to Washington State, selling the victory, getting it done. They've been really overachieving this year. Arkansas State let me down tremendously. Just broke down and stopped scoring. They couldn't finish drives. They would be driving, and Jalen Rayner was just inaccurate in this game and, and couldn't make it happen. And then their secondary just getting toasted and roasted. Shout out to Texas State. Arkansas State let me down. It was a bad read. North Texas, FAU. North Texas finds a way to win. Before the game, I told you guys, if you were worried about this spread, the spread was down to like five points. I don't care. I know what I know. I like what I like. I like North Texas. Now, nowhere in there did I break down FAU for you guys. I didn't say FAU's got Cam Fancher and he can run around and you can't tackle him and stuff. I always find it funny when MVPs bet on a game and then the game starts and they're like, who's this quarterback? Who's this player? And it's like, why did you put your money on a game where you don't know the opposition? You don't know the other team. You've never seen them play. So you just bet on two teams and you've never seen them play. You might as well go bet on Korean baseball. Or Chinese basketball like go bet on you just have the urge to bet on something you've never seen how did you not do your due diligence or your research on these two teams and when somebody's telling me oh my god North Texas isn't going to cover because Florida Atlantic's up by seven or ten I just think to myself have you never watched North Texas play they're gonna score and score some more and they don't play they don't have defense they're going to just keep scoring and you're not going to score anymore and they're going to keep scoring but that 20 point second quarter fell apart but guys the second half they outscored florida atlantic 24 to 10 they were going to keep scoring they ran out of time it happens you have to know what you're betting on you're betting on a team that can score at any time the third down conversions for fau were elite they were pivotal in this game they were critical for uh, North Texas. And, and we miss. Sucks. Unit management's essential. Expectation management's probably more essential. But it happens. First loss of the season for North, or North Texas wins, but first, first time that we haven't covered the spread. Rice UTSA. We don't bet on food. Shout out to Rice. They actually get this done in the most improbable thing four seconds left in the game your boy warner ej warner throws a touchdown to ucla transfer matt sykes good stuff dean connor's played great in this game as well although he had 109 yards receiving i thought his rushing was 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 impressive utsa came out and scored a touchdown to take the lead in this game i thought they're going to win the game and then rice comes back and wins it is it's so impressive both teams are very underwhelming this year Speaking of underwhelming this year, Oregon State losing to Nevada. Nevada's a well-coached team. Nevada played well. I told you Oregon State's brand was better. I told you Oregon State had a better team and a better everything. Statistically, they were better. It didn't matter. Nevada wins. And we miss. Louisiana covers the spread against App State. I'm, ha I'm proud of them. App State's a damn train wreck. And Louisiana's the beast. I like them. 
Like them a lot. Didn't like them enough to bet on them, but I like Louisiana a lot. You guys know that. And then I've already talked about all the other results this week. So, once again, let's go look at the chart real quick. And if you're watching this, you should watch this on 2.0 speed or 1.5 speed. That way you don't skip anything and you finish it all. I'm pre pretty sure the people skimming this aren't watching anymore. So, we ended up 10 and 10 on the week for locks. It is what it is, 50%. Uh, had a really bad late at evening slate there. We were rolling. And when we were rolling right here, I told everybody, I know I put it on the Discord server, hey, pace yourselves. Law of averages are going to come back to get you. Meaning take the night off. Go go do UFC. Could you imagine the MVPs who went like this and then went to UFC? Because the fight card started at 4 p.m. So the MVPs who went here undefeated and then went UFC undefeated. Oh, that's a beautiful feeling. It's a beautiful feeling. Everything else was pretty solid. Four and seven on leans. That's that's um, That's okay. I, I say it's okay. I wish I was better. The reality is, is we started off the week one and three. So one and three end up four and seven. Nah, it is what it is. Breaking even over here, four and two there. Not bad. Props dominated all week. Dominated on props. If you didn't make money on props this week, I don't know what to tell you. I can't do any better. This is the greatest week we've had in props this season. This is the weekday game prop slate, if you see here. So the locks going into Saturday, the prop locks, we're at 13 and 10. Anything above 50% is amazing because those are all plus 100 bets. Okay? So once again, anything above, if you can do these alternate spreads, you do every single one of these for one unit, you would be up by at least three units. And then yesterday we went 12 and 12. So we finished the week 25 and 22. You'd still be up at least three units if you were doing this because they're all plus 100s at a minimum. So that's pretty good stuff. Leans, leans in the black column here, dominated. Dominated this week in leans, 25 and 10. Yesterday went 15 and five, only missed five of these bets. If you made every single one of these bets, you would have been okay. Only missed five. And then for the entire week, 25 and 10. Really, really good. And that's good. We climbed out of the cellar because we had been struggling with those props a little bit. Value bets. There's such high risk, high reward. Got to be careful. Yes, we hit play. But listen, man, a lot of these misses aren't real misses. Like, I, I want people to understand, I'm putting stuff on here just for placeholders. I'm not too concerned about these misses. When I tell you Pofi Ashok's going to score the first touchdown of the game for a plus 1,000, that is not a real bet. That's a hedge. The real bet in that game is actually Genty scoring first touchdown for 150. I hedge the bet with the plus 1,000 over here. So... I know one of these is going to hit, one of these is going to miss. I know that. Same when I do multiple entries on the same game. One's going to hit, one the rest of, well, the rest will miss. I know that, okay? I'm doing that on purpose. So, with that 21 and 29 going into the weekend, the weekend ends up 11 and 17. It's not the end of the world, it's actually pretty solid, probably the best we've ever done in that regard. And then we ended up the week 32 and 46 on that. So overall, though, above 50% on props. First week ever. Remember, we did the 17 and 3 two weeks ago because of the storm. I couldn't do props the rest of the weekend. And last weekend was pretty solid at 47%. We've been trying to climb up. Remember, these 38s, 37s, that's us learning about the teams. As the season goes on, you'll hear the MVPs talk about this. I'm really dialed in. Prop bets, I'm really dialed in, making smarter decisions. I know the teams better. I know the players better. The matchups better. And the more data we gather, the more accurate we can be. And we were over 50% on props this week. That's amazing. Especially when you're hitting plus. I mean, we were hitting some crazy shit during the week. Plus 352. That, and that, that's white text because it was a lock. Plus 292, 230, 200. Like, if you're hitting this at 50%, it's crazy. 330, 400. You know, you're just hitting shit. It's crazy. So, pretty good stuff. I'm sure the prop bettors made a lot of money this week. If they're responsible, they should. So, between that, that, and the almighty UFC, going 11-1 and one on UFC, 91% on the picks. Remember, 11-1 and one improves locks on the season. Actually, I think I need to update these percentages. These percentages aren't updated, I don't think. I got to double check. That's on me. I'll do that after this show. But um, thank you guys for being MVPs. Thank you guys for being here. Just remember, all the information is on the Discord server. It's on Patreon. 
There's no reason you shouldn't get to it. If you're an MVP, you can always get access to the charts. All you have to do, these charts down here on the Locks channels, all you have to do is connect your YouTube or Patreon account and you can see all the charts all week long. And you can take good notes and you can then contribute to the wins column like everybody else. I'll be putting out the, look at that man right there. He bet Oregon $2,000. That doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Oregon against Ohio State. They're equivalent teams. You just want to get it right. That's ridiculous bet. $2,000 for Oregon to beat Ohio State. I'm not proud of that bet. I don't, I'm not impressed. And I don't even think he's an MVP because he's not green. This is MVPs right here. Nomo says, woke up to this. Thanks, Rico. He bet 2500 on Boise State. Don't you see the difference? Boise State versus a hapless Hawaii team. A perennial power with a Heisman Trophy candidate versus nobody. That feels like a really good bet. Versus Oregon versus Ohio State. Two monsters. That doesn't make, like, that doesn't make any sense. Shout out to Nomo. He says, woke up to this. Thanks, Rico. Shout out to Rico. I feel you, man. Shout out to the MVPs out here winning. Yeah, this guy's just making just ridiculous bets. I don't know how I got a plus 900, but I like what he's doing. Whatever he's doing, more power to him. All right, y'all. Results were a mixed bag for some people, but if you're doing UFC and college football and you're doing it intelligently, you should be way up. Way the fuck up. Just saying. Your friends don't know, but Rico knows. Peace, y'all.